So our next speaker is unable to make it today due to a very unknown, unfamiliar virus that restricts you from being around other people. So unfortunately, we're not going to have her here presently, but we do have, she did absolutely crush a, a, a virtual recorded presentation. So um, that is going to be Kate Van from Borrego. Um, and Kate is going to talk about Solar Project Finance 101. It's uh, pretty exciting. So let's kick it off. Thank you. Hi. My name is Kate Van, and I'm a project finance manager at Borrego, a leading developer of solar and storage in the United States. Today, I'm here to talk to you about Solar Project Finance 101. Why? Because in order to get more solar projects on the grid, first, we have to get them financed. So what does project finance even mean? Project finance is the financing of long-term infrastructure relying primarily on the project's cash flow for repayment. Today, our example ground mount solar development is Switch Solar LLC. Unfortunately, Switch Solar has no credit history, no employees, it's never generated cash, it's never operated, and has no guarantees from anyone creditworthy promising to repay a loan. So how are we going to get $10 million to build this project? And that's where project finance comes into play. To attract investors, Switch Solar LLC will assemble a series of contracts to de-risk and to provide certainty into its economics and cash flow over its lifetime. First, let's under make sure we understand the anatomy of a solar farm. So the sun hits the panels producing kilowatt hours. These kilowatt hours are read at a meter and are typically sold through a fixed term power purchase agreement. The off taker of this agreement will pay Switch Solar a fixed dollar per kilowatt hour rate. Next, let's understand the timeline of the project. During development and construction, money is going out the door as we secure permits, lease agreements, and construct the project. Then during operations, the project will generate revenue during its 35 plus year operating life. Let's look at a simple financial model. During development and construction, we have capital expenditures or CapEx. Then during operations, we have revenue. We'll back out our operating expenditures, OPEX, and get down to our earnings. Then we also have the ITC, the investment tax credit in year one. Remember, it will cost $10 million to build the project. And most of this cost is through the EPC agreement, engineering, procurement, and construction. Then we also need to pay a development fee and any interconnection upgrades so we can plug into the grid. During operations, the project will sell the kilowatt hours it produces. Here we have an example 15 year power purchase agreement, PPA, with a credit worthy off taker. Then from years 16 through 35, the project will sell into the spot market, and we call this merchant revenue. After revenue, we'll back out our expenses. So the project will need to pay an operation maintenance agreement, asset management agreement, make lease payments to the landowner, pay property tax, and any other bills. So we have our revenue, we back out our OPEX, and that'll get us down to our EBITDA, our earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and amortization. Then back out tax and depreciation, add in the investment tax credit or ITC, which we can kind of think of as a year one revenue or tax benefit. So let's dive into the ITC a little bit. About 95% of our CapEx, excluding interconnection, is considered eligible for ITC. We take our eligible CapEx, multiply it by our ITC percentage, and that gets us to our investment tax credit amount. Let's look at an example. Of our $10 million CapEx, about $8 million is considered eligible. We multiply $8 million by our current ITC rate of 26%, and that gets us a $2.08 million ITC, which we can think of as a year one revenue or tax benefit to the project. Another benefit of ITC is accelerated depreciation. Most of the CapEx qualifies for accelerated depreciation with the exception of interconnection. And this depreciation you can think of as a large tax benefit to the project. Now that we've assembled a series of agreements or contracts which provide certainty into Switch Solar LLC's economics, we are ready for project financing. So let's go get some investors. So now we're going to be talking about the capital stack. Who is financing the $10 million to build Switch Solar LLC? Usually there are three parties, the sponsor, tax equity, and debt. Here we have a 30, 30, 40% split. Each one of these parties has their own return requirements and reason for wanting to be in the deal and invest. Looking at bigger on numbers, the sponsor and tax equity returns may be closer to 10% where debt is a little bit cheaper at four to 5%. But why do each one of these parties want to invest? So the sponsor is gonna be the long-term owner of this project and they'll generate from the long-term cap and they'll benefit from the long-term cash flow. 
tax equities in the deal to utilize the investment tax credit to lower their tax liability. And for debt, solar is considered a safe investment, especially with a long-term PPA from an investment grade off-taker. So now let's look at a high-level financing structure called a partnership flip. Switch Solar LLC produces both cash and tax benefits. The hold co represents the partnership between the sponsor and tax equity, and you can see debt is provided at the hold co level, which we call back leverage. In this structure, the sponsor and tax equity share the cash and tax benefits and flip their allocated benefits at a predetermined date. And this is super high level solar project finance 101, how we finance and get more solar on the grid. Thanks so much for your time.